Good afternoon YouTubers. This video addresses the frequency hopping aspect of the HF90. One of the key attributes of HF radio is that you can make it completely self-contained uh, with its own power source uh, and potentially radio can talk directly to radio. You don't require any cell phone towers and there's no requirement for satellites. The signal bounces directly off the ionosphere, which is 110 kilometers above our heads. It presents the ideal emergency radio, and as such is much used by the military and aid agencies. One drawback, however, is that uh, it can be easily listened into uh, if you're using fixed frequency. Now for this reason, frequency hopping is very attractive because if you shift the frequency very rapidly in synchronism, uh, you can potentially maintain communication whilst denying an enemy uh, the ability to listen in. There's been a proliferation uh, of ham radio equipment that can very easily be uh, converted to cover the entire HF band uh, by simply clipping out a, a diode on the PCB and uh, terrorists can easily get hold of this equipment. So for aid agencies, this uh, poses a significant risk. Now, neither the military nor aid agencies uh, want uh, unwanted parties to listen in to them. Uh, one potential uh, solution would be to adopt speech scrambling. However, really that's a, a rather unsatisfactory solution as it's uh, easily identifiable uh, and consequently can easily be jammed. Hopping, however, is much more difficult to intercept and jam, uh, particularly single sideband hopping. Uh, when you look at that on a spectrum analyzer, because it's only emitting energy uh, that co correlates with the speech, it's very difficult to detect because it has a signature quite close to noise. So how does hopping work? Well, all radios in the net must have the same key code, which can be changed when required. Uh, you can allocate a master station uh, and a number of slave stations, and the master station is responsible for sending out a synchronization burst. This occurs on a number of sync channels, uh, and the slaves pull around these sync channels listening for synchronization from the master station uh, until it's heard, uh, decoded and acquired. And once uh, synchronized, all the stations change frequency uh, in perfect lockstep uh, at the hop rate, which in the HF90 is five hops a second. Now you may think uh, that GPS uh, with its very accurate time synchronization presents a, a suitable solution for synchronizing a frequency hopping net. However, uh, this detracts immediately from the uh, autonomous benefit of shortwave or HF radio. Um, if you're using a third party's synchronization source, uh, you're effectively beholden to them. Now, GPS is provided uh, to us by the US government. Uh, and that is a third party. So it's inherently undesirable to hand off that responsibility to someone other than uh, your own people. And we move on now to the HF90 hopping specification. Uh, a hop rate of five hops a second was chosen. This is uh, very close to the syllabic rate, uh, which is a convenient hop rate to adopt. On HF, if you choose too high a hop rate, uh, there's the danger that um, different uh, hop chunks will propagate at different rates. And so when you reassemble them all, uh, it will potentially become garbled if the hop rate is too high. For the HF90, a 256 kilohertz wide hop band was chosen, or a quarter of a megahertz. 
uh, that's a satisfactory compromise because it's hard to jam such a significant uh, chunk of spectrum and yet at the same time uh, it fits into the bandwidth of a whip, a short whip antenna or dipole antenna. Another reason is that uh, 256 chunk of spectrum tends to propagate with roughly the same characteristics at either end. It's not sufficiently wide that um, it will propagate uh, at different rates at, at either end. Um, it hops uh, over 256 channels on a one kilohertz raster. And the method of um, the Keystream generator, uh, it was adopted uh, the data encryption standard, the 64-bit DES uh, was effectively used to generate that Keystream generator, that pseudo-random sequence uh, to determine the hop sequence. The DES was used effectively in feedback mode in order to uh, continuously generate random numbers. And that random sequence repeats every 457 uh, times 10 to the 6 years. So that's uh, a very, very long uh, repeat time. Uh, it uses eight synchronization channels, and these are uh, not predictable because they're randomly generated. And the sync repeat time is also uh, not inherently predictable. Uh, it ranges between 30 seconds and two minutes. So if the enemy is sitting waiting to uh, hear a sync, they won't know exactly where it will turn up initially. And also they, they will not be able to tell um, what elapsed period of time will occur before a sync uh, is detected. So that lends uh, a degree of anti-spoofing to the HF90 through this synchronization system. Now the hopping technique is as follows. The master and slaves, they enter the same code uh, on, on the keypad. This determines the sync channels uh, and the hop sequence. Net members enter the hop mode by pressing the mode button. Uh, shortly after that, the master radiates a 64-bit synchronization burst, uh, which is forward error corrected. And these sync bursts are in uh, pseudo-random time slots. Uh, as said before, uh, the average time between sync bursts is 26 seconds, uh, but that varies and is not uh, easily predictable. And uh, when unlocked, the slaves pull around the eight synchronization channels uh, relatively rapidly. And on hearing synchronization, if the forward error correction decodes satisfactorily, the slaves lock on to that. If a slave fails to recover one in 10 subsequent sinks, it drops back to the polling mode. Uh, this is an anti-spoofing measure. It uh, stops the enemy transmitting uh, recorded synchronization bursts and getting uh, a net to spuriously lock to these. The Reed solomon forward error correction is capable of locking uh, down to one in four bit error rate. Uh, that's a very poor signal to noise ratio. So that renders the hop algorithm relatively robust. This slide shows the hopping frequency space. Starting at the bottom of the HF band at two megahertz, there are 103 contiguous hop bands stepping up in a quarter of a megahertz slices. So each band is 256 kilohertz wide and uh, contains 256 1 kilohertz space channels. The uh, 256 kilohertz uh, hop width uh, is chosen, as said before, because uh, you can accommodate that within the bandwidth of a short whip antenna or a dipole. Uh, it's also hard to jam and uh, 
when it's propagating via sky wave, that entire quarter of a megahertz slice uh, tends to propagate uh, with roughly the same group delay, which is uh, highly desirable. Here we see an HF90 frequency hopping demo. On the right hand side uh, is a radio set up as a master station. On the left hand side, this station is set up as a slave station. We enter frequency hopping on the slave by pressing the uh, mode button. You see a small H in the display and the receiver can be heard pulling around the synchronization channels relatively rapidly. When we press the uh, hopping button on the master, it says hold for a brief period and then it will transmit a synchronization pulse and it uh, synchronizes immediately. I'll just plug this small voice enunciator in and we'll hear the link in action. It will play a speech message. So there's the voice message. 